Hey folks, in this video we're going to be discussing how to nest queries in Google Sheets query function. So we are going to be introducing the concept of a query within a query and uh, we are going to uh, just do a basic this is how it's done um, so that you're introduced to the topic. In a previous video I introduced the pivot uh, method within query and nesting queries is going to leverage that pivot option in order to add a total column to our pivot. So we're gonna begin with a little example of how to set up a query within a query. <clears throat> so for a refresh, we have a query here that is pivoting a set of data from sheet one where we have a dimension called program type, where we have two classifications, uh, loyalty program members and non-members. So what we did in our example is we used the pivot function in order to see the amount of inventory that we had for loyalty program and for non-member programs. So what we wanna see now is the total inventory aligned with each month. Now there's plenty of different ways that you could do this. I want to use uh, a nested query in order to introduce that topic because in our dashboard build, we're going to be using nested queries. So I want you to have a base understanding of it. So um, when you want to query a query, effectively what you're doing is you are taking one query, which is providing an output that we are seeing behind us in our example. And instead of referencing a sheet or a range, you are going to be referencing the query. So the same way in your query statement where you say that you want to query sheet one, columns A through G, you can use query in order to say that you want to query the query. So effectively, you'll see here that we are in the data portion of our statement. Right? So in the, in the example documentation, we have A2 through E6. What we're doing is we're referencing the query of sheet one columns A through G with the following parameters. So when we add in a comma, we are then moving into our query statement. Now the challenge or the change rather with querying a query is that we can no longer select by column names. So if we wanted to just select A, right, which we can do for an example here, we're going to get an error message. And you can see that our error in, in the blue text or the black text box that pops up says unable to parse query string for function query parameter two. And it's saying no column A. What happens with data structures is um, they reference um, number coordinates. And when you're operating within a spreadsheet, you have a graphical user interface, which is the actual spreadsheet program that is giving you these coordinate points such as A1, B2, C3, D4, so on and so forth. That enables you to say sheet one, A through G. And when you say sheet one A through G, you can select column A, column C, and some D. But when you're querying a query, those, those reference points that are part of the graphical user interface, otherwise known as a GUI, don't rep, they don't exist anymore. You're now starting to play with the raw data inputs. So when you use query of a query, you have to start referencing the column numbers. So now you'll see I've entered in capital C-O-L-1. And when I hit enter, you can see I'm returning the first column within our query statement. I'm going to undo what I just did so that you can see. All of the other values come in. Our query within the query is gone. And you can see we are selecting A, C, and some D which is effectively the same thing as us doing our query where we say select A. So in the event that you have a typo and you, sorry, I'm gonna cap that, that's just my preference. 
Let's say you do a typo and you just do call one like that. You're going to get an error. Query is hyper literal and it is case sensitive. So if you do a lowercase c o l one, you're not going to return a result. It has to be capital C o l one. And then if you want to, you can quit. You can pick as much or as little of your data set as you want. This might be a method that you explore, um, you know, in various use cases that arise in your day to day data operations. Um, what I want to show you, and actually one last thing I want to show you before I get to my specific example, you can still do uh, select star in here. So if you just want to return everything you can, it's not, I mean, it's kind of pointless if you're, you know, just doing select star of this specific query, you might want to add on additional statements within your where that are not available when you query for the first time. Um, but it is available if you want to just select star. For my purposes, I want to select column one, column two, column three, and column four. What I want to do after that is I want to do column three plus column four. And then I want to label column three plus column four as total inventory. And now you'll see I have a summation column over here that aligns with our total inventory. And in order to audit it, I'm now gonna run a query on sheet one. And instead of doing um, a pivot, I am going to select A, C, sum D, where A equals United States. And I'm gonna group by A and C. And then I'm going to order by A and C. I'm going to do my double quote, comma one, hit enter. We're getting some funky formatting over here because of um, some old examples that I did in here. So we're going to go to our automatic. And now, oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to order by C descending so that all that lines up. We're going to clean up this formatting. And now you can see that our totals are matching up to our nested query. Now, like I said, there's a lot of different ways that you could go about achieving getting a total column with your initial query here. One example could be doing um, a, an array if you wanted to tie um, this query to this query, there's, there's no right or wrong way to do it. The reason that I did it this way is because I wanted to introduce the concept of querying a query because there will be times where you are going to want to do deeper segmentations on your queries that may not be possible with your initial query statement. Pivot is one of those examples because I, at least I'm not aware of a way to aggregate two columns together within your pivot without doing some type of secondary functionality. One last thing that I want to touch on as it relates to um, some of the syntax in here is you can use column number like this if this was your preference, if you didn't want to mess around with selecting A, C, some D like this. You can you could use that syntax within a query if you add curly brackets around your data set. Now you can see I'm getting an error in here and now I'm getting a very similar error with my black box there that says no column A. That's because I've added these curly brackets around there. So what I would need to do now is I would say select column one, select column three because of column C, and then I'm gonna do column four. I'm gonna say where column one equals United States. I'm gonna group by column one and group by column three, and then we're gonna order by column one and order by column three descending. And what we should see over here is absolutely no change in our query statement, or in our output rather, from our query statement. You can see it operates exactly the same way. So um, to recap here, today we learned how to query a query. 
specifically how to um, add together um, two columns from our pivot query, as well as the syntax for referencing call number rather than the column letter. In our next video, we are going to be exploring what I call the zero solution. And the zero solution is necessary when you have a pivot that you want to um, sum in the way that we have, meaning sum two columns together in your, your query statement, where the columns do not have any values in them. So you can see here that our, the uh, nested query where we're adding column three plus column four is no longer returning our desired, our desired output because there are missing values in our query pivot. So you can see that when we enter in this aggregate group here of Matt and Hallie, we, know, we get some blanks in our loyalty and non-member columns, which is resulting in query trying to add a null value to a integer. And as we've discussed in some of our data type videos, you cannot mix data types. And what's happening here is there's nothing in here and thus it cannot be added to this. And the query function fails because it's unable to identify that this null actually means like zero, which is, you know, that would give you 37, 53, 15. So what you need to do is you need to add zeros into the pivot in order to accomplish your desired result. That video is on my channel if you're interested in it. I hope you found this one to be helpful. Uh, I'm always interested in feedback, so hit up that comment section. And yeah, I wish you the best of luck on your data journey.